Hi, so my friends, welcome back to my channel, Kira Hair Island Socialist on Instagram, and my blog is islandsocialist.com. If you want to learn how to turn a top into a topper, keep watching. In this video tutorial, I'll be sharing how to turn a top into a little cardigan top. I used the Arlington sweater pattern from Love Notions and made this super cute little cropped cardigan. Or I came up with this idea from our Secret Source program in 2022. My lovely Secret Source, Katie Grimm, got me this bicycle handles fabric and I needed to find something to make. She wanted to see an Arlington hack. This is what I came up with. So the bicycle fabric is cotton spandex and I used a matching gray cotton ribbing. I chose the Arlington sweater because that is one of my tried and trues. I know it fits me well and I love the bishop sleeves as well. You can use any top pattern for this tutorial but I recommend the Arlington sweater because I am going to cheat a little bit and use some of the lines that are already on the pattern to help me to get this done a little bit easier. This top can be worn as a top button up or I can also unbutton it and wear it as a cardigan. So I'm gonna unbutton it and show you what it looks like. So this is what it looks like as a little cardigan. One thing I really want you to note is how flat the neck band sits on my neck. Because that is something I am going to touch on in the video tutorial. Now I did make a new one as well. That is the one that you'll be watching me sew up. It's this colorful ITY fabric and then the contrast bands are cotton spandex. So grab your Arlington sweater pattern or any other top pattern of your choice and let us make this super cute cropped cardigan top. Okay, welcome to my sewing table. Now, the first thing I do if I have to do anything that involves pattern drafting is I try to do things in mini version first. I think that's a really good tip if you need to draft something from scratch instead of wasting big pieces of paper or trying to work out things with large calculations. I suggest doing it in mini form first and then you can apply whatever techniques and methods and calculations to the larger pieces of paper after. So I have two three inch squares and I just used this ruler to create my three inch squares and we're going to pretend that this is the Arlington pattern, right? Obviously it would have a neckline, it would have armholes and the whole works but for this demonstration we are going to just use three inch squares to simplify it all. Then I have this piece of paper and this also measures three inches in length but then in width this is actually the width that my neckband will be. So, you know, when you fold a neckband in half and then you'll attach it to the neck at the 3 8 inch and then it will look something like this. So this is calculated so that it will have a finished neckband of one and a half inches after you take away the 3 8 inch seam allowance. So this, let me just write on it neck band this measures three and three quarters of an inch across so that when you fold it in half and you sew at the three inch three eight inch seam allowance it will then come to a one and a half inch neck band so what we're going to do is we're going to imagine that this is the fold line of the Arlington pattern so I'm just gonna write line and I'm just gonna write all front right and this is a replica of this one because what I want to do is attach this neckband to this so I'm gonna go ahead and sew right here at 3 8 inch seam allowance so this is what it looks like when it's sewn and of course it would be like this you'll have your seam allowance folded to the inside and it would be like this right so the next thing i want to do is find the center of my neckband because the center is where the buttons and buttonholes will go and half of one and a half inches is three quarters of an inch so i am just going to go ahead and mark that halfway point so right here is where you have your little buttons along the center now i want that 
my center front when it's buttoned is exactly the same as the original center front on the Arlington pattern. And if you check them against each other, you can see that it is not, it is a little bit bigger because I added this band. And when you measure, you can see that it's off by the exact three eighths of an inch. That means that I need to take away three eighths of an inch from the original pattern before adding my neckband and that will result in my center front buttons being exactly in the same position as the center front of the original pattern. So if you wanted it to be a little bit bigger, like you wanted more room to layer under your cardigan, I would suggest going up a size or maybe you can just omit the taking away of that three eighths inch. I haven't tested that, so I cannot tell you for certain, but I know that I want my cardigan to fit exactly like the original Arlington top. I am comfortable with that amount of ease because I actually want this to be a fitted cardigan that I can wear as a top on its own and, and also as a top up. So I'm going to remove these stitches and I am going to take away the 3 8 inch from the original pattern and add the neckband again and you can see that it will come back to this exact. So make sure you run all sorts of tests first on these little mini ones before you go ahead and cut into your fabric or before you go ahead and pattern this on the actual bigger pieces. So here I have a new one with a 3 8 inch removed. And now you can see my center fronts match up exactly. So with my fitted Arlington cardigan, when I button, it is going to fit me exactly like the original Arlington sweater pattern. With the exception, of course, that it's buttoned and has a new fancy neckband, which we are going to get into right now. So I'm going to bring my actual pattern pieces and we're going to make the changes to those. So here I have my original Arlington pattern. And this is what my mess looks like after I did my trial versions <laughs> of this pattern. The first thing I'm going to do is adjust the length. And from my testing, I found I like it one and a half inches lower than the length and shorten line. So that my new line ends one and a half inches below my length and shorten line. And the next thing I did was straighten the edge. So I'm going to go ahead and trim off this excess. Remember, we're going to take away that three eighths of an inch from the front. And I like a V-neck cardigan. You can use the cowl neck line just as it is, and that would give you a scoop. Of course, you want to lower it. So this is what I did, and this was all trial and error. I'm going to show you on my adjusted pattern. As you can see, I drew a line straight through the apex, straight across, and then I measured up. So in my first test, I measured up half inch, and you can see the mark here, but I found out that one was just a little bit too low. And then for my second one, which is the one with the bicycle handle fabric that you've seen, on social media, that one I went an additional inch above, so a total of one and a half inches above the apex marking. And that one I found I want to be just a little bit too high. So in today's demonstration, I'm just going to go one inch above the apex marking. So there is my line through my apex, and now I'm going to go one inch above that line. That's what that looks like. So you can choose where you want your v-neck line to hit. Bearing in mind, there's going to be a neckband attached to this as well. So that's gonna also add some height. And the next step, and I love the fact that we have this curl neck marking because that is the mark I'm going to use to connect to my v-neck point. And the reason for this is, 
if we use the regular neck when you add that one and a half inch band this is going to be creeping up your neck like a mock neck and i want it to lay flat around my neck so i need it essentially to go towards the shoulder a little bit more so on another pattern that does not have this additional line you will need to measure inward how much you want it to go in but because we have this cow neck line that is a nice cheat for me so i'm gonna just line my rule up the edge of the cow line on my v-neck mark and easy peasy this is my v-neck line and this is my new front pattern piece and i'm just gonna add tidy because it's going to become my arlington sweater cardigan the back is even simpler so this is my back of course i have adjusted my length the only difference is as you can see i did do a little cheetah's sway back adjustment <laughs> Um, so it was originally the same one and a half inches lower than the length and shorten line, but I did take off a little extra in the center box. So this is what the original neckline looks like on the Arlington pattern. You have the regular neckline and then you have the cowl neckline as well. So for my first test, I actually cut directly on the cowl neckline that way the shoulder would match up with the front shoulder since we cut the front shoulder at the cowl but i found that this the back the center back fell a little bit too low so even when i added my one and a half inch band there was too much of a dip and that was causing gaping at the back neckline so what i did instead is i did cut from the cowl neckline at the shoulder so that the shoulder matches the front but then I drew a new curl that connected it to the original regular neckline. And that is what my new neckline looks like. And that is it for changes to the back. So you're going to connect your cowl neckline at the shoulder to the regular neckline at the center back. Now that we have new pattern pieces, we won't be able to use the regular Arlington sweater shirt hemband because this hemband is made to fit lower on the hip. And because of how short my pattern piece is now, it actually hits a lot closer to my waist. As you can see, this is the waist notch. So this is a cropped cardigan. Should have added cropped. <laughs> So this is a cropped cardigan. Of course, you can do it whatever length you want. So if you wanted to keep the original shirt length, that is fine. And in that case, you can use this exact length of the hemband. But in my case, it's going around a smaller circumference. So it's going to end up a little bit shorter. I also want it to be a little less wide because the Arlington hemband gives you a four inch waistband and I would prefer a three inch waistband. Since this is a cropped cardigan, um, just so that it doesn't overpower the cardigan, I think I need a shorter hemband. So for the bicycle handles one, I did do the three inch waistband and I found that that looks perfect. The first thing I'm going to do is turn this into a three inch waistband instead of a four inch waistband. And the calculation for that is super simple. You need it to be three inches that's folded in half so that's a total of six inches and then you need to add your three eighths inch seam allowance to both sides so plus three eighths inch plus three eighths inch and that's six and three quarters so i'm going to change this so that it is six and three quarters this ruler is six inches so I'm going to use that to help me. I am going to first draw three quarters of an inch. And then from that line, I can do six inches. All right, so this will give me a three inch waistband. Now we just need to deal with the circumference and of course that means we need to measure our pattern pieces right so the way this band is going to be applied 
is this band is going to be applied first before the neck band. So it is going to be applied right up to this edge. However, the front will be stitched to the back. So you'll have a little 3 inch, 3 eighths inch seam allowance missing from this side. So I'm just going to go ahead and draw that in. Right? So this little mark is 3 eighths inch seam allowance. So I'm going to go ahead and measure. And I have 9 and 3 quarters. Right? And that is your front. And then the back is cut on the fold. And again, the back will be stitched to the front. So you need to take away that 3 8 inch seam allowance. So I've done a little mark there. And this is 10 and a quarter. So what we're going to do now is just add these two together. So 9.75 plus 10.25, that's actually 20 inches. And then we want our waistband to have negative ease. So it pulls in nicely at the waist. So I'm going to go for 80%. So you're going to multiply this by 0.8. And that gives me 16. So our waistband is going to be 16 inches and you're going to cut that on the fold. So this is my original waistband and this currently measures about 18 and a half and we only need it to be 16. That is my new waistband. I'm going to be using the bishop sleeve with this pattern. So I have my cuff and this cuff is meant to have a finished width of three and three quarters i believe but again i want a three inch cuff to match my waistband and as we calculated previously you need six and three quarters to get that and i don't need to change anything else that's it for the cuff i'm using the cuff and this the regular bishop sleeve i don't need to make any changes to those at all except that I want my cuff to be three inches, of course. This is probably the single most important step of this hack, and that is calculating your neckband. I'm going to cut the neckband in two pieces, not on the fold. I actually just find that that center back seam on a neckband helps it to sit better around the back of the neck, the neck as opposed to a fold. I don't know if that's just me. I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. So I want my neckband to have a finish width of one and a half inches. And we already calculated that with those little tiny squares. In order for that to happen, it needs to be three and three quarters of an inch. So I've already just taped together some paper, a strip that is three and three quarters wide. Now we need to actually calculate the length and the different stretch percentages. Now, when I tested my first one, and I'll insert pictures, I did everything at 80%, including around the, the back of the neck and so forth, and there was a lot of gaping. And for my second test, I made sure to rectify that by having different percentages along the neckband. It seems like a lot of work, but it is going to be absolutely worth it in the end. So here is my back. And you can see my back neckline there. I'm going to grab my measuring tape. And we're going to measure along the seam allowance. So we're going to take away that 3 8 inch from the shoulder because it will be attached to the front there. And with this, I am rounding down. Because I'm working with knit fabrics, I feel comfortable rounding down. So here we go. So I am going to just use five. It's like the smidgenest over five, and I am comfortable using five. So back, neck, we're going to go with five inches. 
and for the back neck i want to do a 75 percent post to 80 or 85 like i did in my first test so we're going to multiply this by 0.75 and that's going to give me three and three quarters so with the front neck it is broken up a little bit more and what i want to do is call this point here a notch that is literally the point of the v so for my front neck i'm going to put front neck to notch so we know we know that we're not going past that notch just yet and again i'm going to take my measuring tape and we're measuring along the seam allowance And remember, there's shoulder seam allowance as well. So you're measuring from right from that notch up to the shoulder seam allowance. Here is my 318 seam allowance. And I have exactly 10, 10 inches. And in this case, I want to multiply this by 0.8 for 80%. Because this area doesn't need to curve as much as the back neck. But you still want to have that little bit of negative E so that there's no gaping. So I found 80% is good for me. And that is 8 inches. And then the last section now will be from the notch to the hem, right? But then remember, we also have our 3 inch band. And this section. We don't want any stretch whatsoever because this is where our buttons are going to be placed and we're going to use interfacing to stabilize it as well. So let's run the calculations for this now. Remember again, you have your little 3 8 inch seam allowance here where the band would be attached so you don't need that. That will be non-existent because the band will be already attached. So you're going to measure from there straight to here and that's about seven what do i call this let's call this front notch to him and that's seven inches we don't need to multiply by anything because like i said we're not interfering with any stretching or any ease in that area we want it to be exactly as it is then we need to add our three inch hem band. And that is 10 inches. And also you can't have the edge of the neck band raw. So you do need that little three eighths inch seam allowance at the end of it as well. So we're gonna add our three eighth inch seam allowance. And that's 10 and three eighths. And this is how we are going to draft our neck band using these measurements okay so now we're going to actually convert these measurements to an actual neckband pattern and we're going to start by adding three eighths of an inch seam allowance because like i said we want to have that center back seam as opposed to a fold line all right so we have our Seam allowance, center back. Next, we need the 3.75 for the back neck curve. Have two notches so that you know exactly where these notches are going. So these are my back neck notches, and you're going to match these to the shoulders right match to shoulder then we need the front from those neck notches to that v point notch and that's eight inches and so these notches are your v neck notch so remember from hair to hair has 75% and then 
from your shoulder to that front v-neck notch has 80 percent and now we're gonna add our 10 and 3 eighths so here i've added my 10 and 3 eighths and this is my finished neckband piece if you want to you can draw in the seam allowance to the bottom as well so this is your seam allowance And this is our hem. And you are going to cut two of these. And you will cut interfacing from this V neck notch all the way down to the hem. That 10 and 3 eighths, you're going to cut interfacing. So to recap, we have our neckband, we have our front, our back hemband. This is the bishop sleeve and I have my bishop sleeve cuff. So once you cut out your pattern pieces, you are going to go ahead and sew up the shoulder seams, attach your sleeves and also sew up the side seams. So you can see I've attached my cuff already as well. These are all just done according to the regular instructions on the pattern. So I didn't bother to demonstrate those. You also want to clip a notch at your center back hem and center back neckline these notches will come in handy when you're attaching your neckband as well as your hemband one note i wanted to make about the sleeves i forgot to mention this because i've learned through sewing that i apparently have abnormally short arms so i have to shorten my sleeves for almost every pattern that exists under the sun remember we shortened the sleeve cuff by three quarters of an inch that did not affect the length in any way for me i still even had to shorten the sleeve itself another inch to <laughs> make it the right length for me however if the sleeve was already the correct length for you with the extra three quarter inch on the cuff you'll need to go ahead and add that three quarter inch to the length of the sleeve that is if you are shortening your cuff to three inches like i did right so just come something to keep in mind um, if you are adjusting the length of the cuff, make sure you also adjust your sleeve to add back whatever you take away from the cuff or vice versa. So the next step is to add our hem band. And this is my hem band piece, which is the 16 inches cut on the fold. We are going to simply fold this wrong sides together gonna go ahead and just pin this to keep it in place okay so now i have my waistband pinned all together here is that center marking the next thing i want to do is find the quarter so i'm gonna fold the edge to the center marking i'm going to clip and i'm going to do the same on the other side so i have my quarter points i am going to take my cardigan right now i have it upside down so this is the neck edge and this is the hem edge and here is my center back notch and i'm going to do the exact same thing i'm going to fold it to meet the edge meets the notch my quarter point is almost at the side seam but not exactly so now we're going to match up those exact points so here is my center back notch and my center back notch on the waistband and i have my quarter points and of course my edges do the same on the other side And as you can tell, my waistband is quite a bit smaller than my hem, which means we have to go ahead and ease it in. This is what is going to give you that nice negative ease that's going to pull in the waist nicely. Oh. 
Okay, so now we can take this tool, the sewing machine, or the serger, and stitch all the way across to attach the waistband to the hem of the cardigan. This is what it looks like from the wrong side. Obviously, when you're sewing, you're going to make sure to hold it taut so that there are no gathers or ripples and it attaches all smooth and nice. Here you can see I've basted it on with the machine first just to make sure everything is nice and secure and there are no puckers. And now I am going to take it to the serger. Okay, so my hemband is all applied. I have given it a nice press as well. And this is what my cardigan is looking like so far. Here are my neckband pieces. As you can see, I have interfaced that lower section where the buttons will be applied. Here's the v-neck notch right here. And something that I forgot to mention is the stretch direction when you're cutting your hemband and your waistband. I'm just going to go grab my bike handles one because I think since that is ribbing, you'll be able to see the lines better. So this is my bicycle handles one. And the hemband, the stretch goes this way. So the stretch is going around the body. But for the neckband, the stretch is going vertically. So that is the way you want to cut your pattern pieces, right? Because we need this to be able to stretch around the neckline. And then in here has that nice interfacing so down here does not budge to distort the button band in any way. So the first step to so sewing your neckband, I'm just gonna set the cardigan aside for now. We're going to attach the neckband right at that center back seam. So I'm gonna attach the neckbands together at the center back seam, right sides together. I'm gonna sew this with three eighths of an inch seam allowance and press the seams open so here's what that is looking like i have my seams pressed open the next step is to take the bottom hem edge and we are going to fold it right sides together and we're going to stitch three eight inch seam allowance across and of course we are going to do that on both sides So I'm going to go ahead and stitch three eighths of an inch across on both of these ends. So here is what that looks like. And now we need to trim our corners so that it will turn out nice and sharp. Not too close though. And I'm just going to braid these seams a bit. I'm going to make one narrower than the other. Now you can go ahead and turn this out, poke out your corners. Now you can go ahead and fold your entire neckband in half along the long edges and your notches should help you to line up everything easily. that is my entire neckband all pinned together so now we are gonna get ready to apply this to our neckline and this is the final step before buttons and buttonholes so we're almost there so here is my cardigan i find it easy again to flip it upside down and we are going to use our notches to help us align everything so the first notch is this center back notch so we're gonna find our center back seam then we have our shoulder notch so we're going to line that up with the shoulder seam And then let me flip these out of the way. Hopefully, you can see a little better. So, here is my v neck notch, and here is the v neck notch on the neckband. 
we are going to align those two. Use as much pins as you need to because you don't want anything skewed and then you have one side, the v-neck is lower than the other side. So I like to use a ton of pins. I am going to match up the edges. And remember, this part is one-to-one, -one, so there should be no stretching whatsoever. You should be able to just match it very easily. I keep my waistband seam facing toward the cardigan. So that is this button section attached. And as you can see, we'll need to do some easing in here as well as at the back. I'm going to go ahead and do the other side first before I even start easing anything in. So again, shoulder notch, just hold shoulder seam. And v-neck notch to v-neck notch. And edges together. And now we can go ahead and ease in the parts that we need to ease in. I'm going to go ahead and ease the back first. This one has to stretch a lot because remember we did that 75% ratio. So it's going to be a little bit finicky, but it's going to be definitely worth it in the end because you have absolutely no gaping if you use this method. So just take your time and ease it in. It's going to feel very unnatural. Of course, if your fabric has less stretch, you are definitely going to want to increase that percentage. Otherwise, it just may not be able to stretch enough. I am using cotton spandex for my waistband. And for my main, I am using ITY. For my bicycles fabric, I used cotton spandex for the main and I used a cotton ribbing for the bands. Now I can go ahead and ease in this section. Now because this section is on a curve, the neckband is automatically going to pick up that curve once it's attached. As you can see, I don't have to stretch this one nearly as much as around the back neckline. Don't be shy with the pins. So this is what it should look like from the hem edge to the v-neck notch. There should be absolutely no stretch. It should be nicely interfaced and stabilized. Then from the v-neck notch to the shoulder seam, the neckband is 80% of the main. So you do have to ease in a bit. And then from shoulder seam to shoulder seam around the center back neck curve, the neckband is 75% of the main, so you have quite a bit of stretch. As you can see with all these gathers, you'll have to lay this as flat as possible when you're sewing to avoid any gathers or puckers. Again, I'm going to base this first on my sewing machine before I take it to the serger. So I'm going to go ahead and base this. I'll show you what it looks like after it's basted, and then I'll show you what it looks like after it's surged. So here we are all pasted. And we can get an idea of what she's going to look like when she's all done. So I'm going to go ahead and take this to the serger now. Okay, so normally if I'm stitching on a band, especially using the serger, I would sew the band on top. But because of all the stretching, especially around the back neckline, I want to make sure I can see that there are no gathers or puckers happening. So I'm going to actually sew with the band on the bottom. I'm leaving a tail because I am going to thread 
this sort of tail back up through the band and then when this is pressed when the seam allowance is pressed two of the bodice the neckband will then hide that and then this area will look a little bit cleaner so i have threaded the surgery tail through this very thick upholstery needle and i'm going to push this under the surgery threads make sure not to catch any fabric That should be good. And you just trim the excess and for good measure, I'm going to add some free check. And this is what it will look like from the right side. Obviously, you will give your band a nice press. If you want to, you can top stitch. I prefer it without top stitching. So I'm just gonna press it nicely and make sure that this band covers the seam allowance. So the last step is to remove the basting stitches that we did on the machine to keep the band in place and then give it one final press to get the band laying all neat and nice and then you can go ahead and do your buttons and button holes and remember you're only doing the buttons and button holes within that interfaced portion and you can feel you can definitely feel with your fingers where the interface portion starts so this is my final cardigan here's what she looks like on the inside i hope that the process was really clear and simple i know the calculations maybe a little bit of overload <laughs> but i think it is worth it in the end to end up with a super cute cardigan top from just the arlington sweater pattern i love the fact that we were able to use the cowl neckline as the starting point of the v it is just so so cute so here's my new allenton sweater cardigan i love this one as well i love the bright fun colors obviously i live on an island a tropical island and this is just right up my street here is your 360 I did the same bishop sleeves and everything. I literally did this one exactly the same as my previous one, with the exception of lowering the neck half inch. And what I should have changed is the cotton spandex because it has less stretch than the cotton ribbon and it also has much better recovery. I should have used 80% around the back neck and then 85 on the rest of the cardigan it was just really hard to sew especially around the back neck the you really really had to stretch and ease that thing in and use a gazillion pins and it even had to seam rip a little bit um, where there were some puckers so my advice is stick with the 80 and 85 unless you're using something that doesn't have much recovery or a very 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 stretchy fabric like ribbon then the 75 80 would work it still looks great and nobody would even know that i struggle to sew around the back neck the back neck sits so flat on my neck which is the perk of using the 75 percent but i think 80 would have been fine as well so it's kind of trial and error and it's just based on the stretch and the recovery of your fabric choice so we've come to the end of this video thank you so much for watching i know it's a very very long video but i didn't want to leave out any details at all and i wanted to make it as clear as possible with all those measurements and calculations involved so i hope you will give this a try and make your own arlington cardigan or turn any other top into a topper that's it for now and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!